I'm Mel Williams from Bala in Wales in the UK and here I am in my lovely studio and with all my trusty items that I like to work with and my waxes and things that I make as I go along all the colours and here is my inspiration out of the window uh, I live in a lovely spot of the, in the country and I have a little stream in the garden too so I'm I'm very, very spoiled. So not too far up the road from me, we have a very old Roman bridge and I thought you, I'd show you how I create the rock formations as I go along today. Um, so to start, I have just a, a, pe a piece of birch ply from the hardware store that my husband has kindly cut for me. I don't do anything very special with it, just sand the edges slightly and then it's ready to go. My little saucepans and things ready to get going and I'm just going to put some encaustic medium in there and get it melting away. Um, warming up my brushes on my hot tray, so ready to go. So I have different brushes for different colours to a degree. Um, all my scrapey tools, my little blow torches, my big blow torch, all that jazz. Always very enthusiastic and can never be waiting for things to warm up. So here I am, I'm just going to get the old heat gun on that and give it a, a little bit of assistance in melting so I can get going. So here we go, you don't want to overheat it, so you don't want it to be smoking, so that's not good. Here's my piece of birch ply. You may notice I'm wearing gloves and also I've got some cut off socks that I wear around my wrist because I'm very messy when I paint. It covers my watch, um, it stops me from burning myself. Heat up the birch ply. I've got this on about a number seven, but all, all of them are slightly different, so you have to work out what works best for you. So I'm just going to heat that up a bit, and then I'm ready to pop in with my wax. And as you can see, because it's warm, it's going on very easily. I always work on panels like this. I don't tend to work on cradle board, because I, I quite like the wiggly edges. which way you put it on, um, in the way I work anyway, because I quite like texture in my work. So there we are, that's the first layer done. Just squeeze it in. That's the most important thing, make sure it's really, well they're all important, but this, make sure it's really stuck to the board. There you go. Now that will retain some of its heat. Um, ready to put on the next layer. So here we go. Again, I'm going to go straight across the top here. Um, that's so it. Probably put a couple of layers on here. There we are. I've got some whiskers in my brush. So peel those out. So you'll see in this image is quite simple really. There's a slight pinkish hue above the bridge, I think. But for me, I tend to make the sky, I just go with the flow and see what turns up and uh, enjoy the play. So that's what we're gonna do first. I'm gonna do the sky. Um, I tend to make my own encaustic medium, usually an eight to two uh, mix. So, eight beeswax to two resin. Sometimes I put a bit of carinuba wax in, it depends how I'm feeling and what I'm really doing. If I want shiny, shiny water, then I may put some um, carinuba wax in. Just a little bit more of this in the sky. Make sure you have to make sure you bring your uh, wax down low enough. Uh, to do the sky. 
a little bit more at the bottom in the middle because I want to add some matching colour to the water when I get to that bit. There we are. So this is the first stage and I am actually going to fuse this with my blowtorch now. Turn it up a bit. Using that. It doesn't all have to be fused completely flat, but I shall do that a bit later on. Now I've got another crusty kids' saucepan from uh, these were from IKEA actually, but they're very, very they're great for this this work. So there we are. I have a colour that I made earlier. It's a bit of a beigey cream uh, colour there. Put some of that in there. So get it melting. Perhaps a bit of this, add a bit of this medium to it as well to bring it down. I mean, if I was prepared, I would have all these melted, but I'm never prepared. I just like to go with the flow and enjoy the play really and still learning new things all the time you know happy accidents sometimes the pigments split in the wax and sometimes they don't um, it's all great fun it's beginning to melt now this is one that i made a long long time ago um, just made in a little ice cube tray so for little bits that are left over at the end of the day I look the way it's melting, it's probably made with oil paint. Um, so I shall give that a squish now and a twizzle around and start laying some down in the sky. Give it a stir. Oh, there are some bits in it, but I don't mind that. I quite like the bits in it. So this time I'm going to put some, lay it down. Oh, there's a bit of blue in my brush as well. Oh. So I'm going to lay it down like this. This way this time. stage in the way I work. So, there we go. I quite like it going over the edges too. It doesn't matter to me. Um, you'll notice on my deck, on my worktop, I've got oven liners. Great to clean up. Um, protect your surface. Obviously underneath it's still going to get fairly warm so you've got to be careful but it does protect your surface and mean that you can scrape up any wax and you can also clean up easily afterwards. There you go. A bit of that colour in the base as well. But that's a little bit too dark for what I'm wanting. A little bit of oil paint. This one is a Winsor & Newton oil um, and it's not oily. You know, you don't get all that oily gunge coming off. So the trick to using oil paint I've found is to put it on I'm a hands-on sort of person, so I tend to rub it in with my hands, with my gloves on, of course. Rub it in. So it gets into the nooks and crannies and really spread it around. You don't want too much oil paint, otherwise it won't combine with the wax below. So there we go, the bottom as well. Spread it around. This will just lighten it up a bit. And as I heat it up, we'll have some going on. I'll show you what happens if there's too much oil paint and then you'll know what to do. Next stage I'll get my blowtorch and then mix it in a bit. So can you see the nice splits that are happening? Here you see there's a lot of oil paint. Now as this cools sets, it won't take long as you know, you'll see that this is still very smeary. All you need to do is spread it out further or take some out. Up here it's all gone in. There's a little bit there, so you can just, just give it a smear over and encourage it in while it's still warm. There we go. That's lightened it up a great deal. Now I'm going to refruit. <laughs> 
to um, add some more clear medium on the top. It's still warm so it shall go on beautifully. Okay. So straight away we're building up a bit of texture, a bit of colour um, on the bottom. prepared earlier. They're often a bit messy. You can either put them on your hot tray and just get the worst off. Save it, leave it there for a bit later if you want. You know if you've got the uh, right amount of um, oil paint, if you use oil paint in your, in your uh, potions, um, because they're hard so there's a snap to them. Like this one, you know, it's a good old snap. If they're bendy, they're no good. Um, well, it's not that they're no good, but you need to add more medium to them to make sure that they're not too soft on your painting. There we go, I've got some melted there. I quite like the, uh, the fact that it doesn't go on smoothly because when I fuse it, put that on the bottom and I'll have my water later on. That's it, fuse again. I love the blowtorch, I love I like the blowtorch better than the uh, all the little details where it looks like it's running down and in Wales as you probably know we have quite a lot of rainy days what have we got now this whitey creamy colour here that to me that's a bit greyish here a bit lighter at the bottom here maybe some slightly pinky hues in there you can see I'm putting it on in different ways now, so um, different angles and to get different effects. Here's a grey one I made earlier, bit of a snap. So actually I'm going to put that in with that white bit. Mix it all together. A little bit of this grey I've on. This is the thing I like to make it as I go along so I can match up the colours as how I see them. So you can see that's a bit more of a bluey grey. Mix a bit in the water as well. There we go. Now, here I have some um, encaustic medium that is. Um, Ooh, I just dumped my brush with colour on into my encaustic medium. This is pure beeswax and it's got a slightly yellow tone so that's quite nice to add a bit of that in. As you can see I'm extremely messy when I paint because I get so excited. Put it on there a minute and now I'm going to fuse this. I'm just going to move the picture out of the way so that I don't set it on fire. And these are all going to start mixing together. to totally recreate that image exactly but get a, a feel for it um, you sort of get the effect of maybe it's a bit of a, a dreary day and a little bit of rain coming down as you can see lots of little pinholes coming in here now and that's um, coming up through the wood I don't worry about it at this stage a slightly pinky tone in there I'm just gonna put just a smidge fluorescent colour in with this sort of grey colour because to my eyes there's just a smidge of something I am actually going to lighten this up a little bit more so I'm going to put a little bit of just a smidge now I know the amounts I can use to be safe <laughs> um, but it's a bit of trial and error put a little bit more across here those places with the bubbles in. So 
So to me, that's looking quite good. That's looking quite interesting. I think I'm going to add a little bit more of this grey tone there to the river. As you can see, it takes a while to, to get the sky how you want it, you know. You just play and enjoy the process. Pigment stick, no? So. Stuck in the tube, of course. So this is a, a greyish sort of colour. atmosphere now. Make the picture again and let's fuse and see what happens. trying to give you a flavour of this landscape. We often have these days that are a bit dull, a bit like today to be honest. We do get these very moody days so that's what I'm trying to interpret for. I'm ready to start painting my bridge. I've got my heat tool. Um, this is a good one because it's got two heat levels so you as you can see, it's smoking a bit now, so you can turn it down. Another trick I like to do, although this has got to cool a bit, can you see there's a nice sheen on that now? It's nice and smooth. There's one little pin head. There, just get him. And hope that it doesn't make any more. This is a problem for all of us, I think. And, uh, you just have to go with the flow and go with it and eventually sort them out. Okay, so that's that. I'll just let, let this cool a little bit. But one thing I like to do is so I don't spoil my sky, I always keep some, uh, some cling film about. So it's too hot to put it on yet, but it's um, so quite a good tip. So I need a piece of the size of my printer. Second or two, I'm going to put this over the top so that I don't spoil the sky. So I'm sort of dry brushing this bottom bit at the moment. I see the, the nooks and ridges and all things just showing up. Okay, so this is one, two, about three times the size of that. So I'm trying to make a long thing, so I'm going to. Obviously, I have to add something extra to this picture to make it look right. It's still a bit warm, but let's chance it. I'll put that over there just to protect my sky skyline a bit. There we go. So now, if I dribble um, as I pass the brush across, it will go on there. In this image. In the background, we've got some grass and some lighter, some lighter bits. So once again, I have some. I'll use some. Yes. Get that out of the way so I don't dribble on the picture. I'm going to set some of this down in the middle, you know, where, under the bridge, and perhaps a little bit across the top. Once again, I've got lots of colours that I've prepared in the past. Um, 
Okay, so what I'm going to just do is just melt them on here. Pigments have soaked to the bottom. I obviously made this one with pigments, but it doesn't matter. Not to my opinion, anyway. We're all different. on the top, pick up the highlights, if you can see that, it's coming up quite well, and get a bit of this again, and then I'm going to get my blowtorch, but I've got to be I don't melt my play film, so just bring that back a bit. I don't want it too fierce, so turn it down a bit. And then I can just lightly diffuse this into the other. Oh, hole in the glove. I have to get a new glove because I've got a, a very rare bone condition, so I really suffer with my hands. So well, every bit of my body, to be honest, but uh, yeah, I have a, a rare bone condition called hypophosphatasia. Um, so it's a genetic condition and it causes soft bones, weak muscles, problems with muscles and tendons, and it's a real pain in the neck. Um, so I do struggle with a lot of pain all the time. Um, but painting is my joy, so I'm going to keep going um, because it distracts me from it. Um, Pain. And this is one of the reasons I took up encaustic originally, um, because um, the heat helps me deal with the pain. <clears throat> some more of this. stylus. Uh, so I'm going to start in the middle here and as you can see these are right near the top so I'm going to a bit of this this again and just rub it in to the rocks and can you see that this is getting so rocky shapes coming obviously there was, there's a lot of work yet I've got a lot of shadows and stuff and I'm just going to lightly fuse that and I think actually at this stage I'm going to use this one this is a little craft torch. 
nice. Now, because this is going to take me a long, long time, I'm actually going to switch off for a bit and continue with my rocks and then um, I'll come back to you when I've put all this in. You can see I've put in loads more little rocks along here and on the bridge and then this is the bit that's going to be dark under the bridge. Once again, is a, a bit of colour that I'd prepared earlier. Um, I'm going to use a smaller brush this time. So I'm just going to melt some on here on my hot plate. And I'm going to quickly add some of these darker tones under here. that I fried with the blush so I need to fuse so you only need to let it glisten you don't need to get it all running everywhere so now I want to add some more tones to these bits and some darker bits I'm going to get some black oil paint again it's one that's not full of juicy um, oil and can you see these are coming to life now so basically I'm just gonna rub it until it looks all cremes and then I'm gonna take off the excess to me that looks quite similar to, to the rocks again I'm gonna lightly fuse this in also in these nooks and crannies, it's going to take a little while for this oil paint to dry. Um, so you've got to be aware of that, that dry it will, and some of it will be infused. Um, dark bits between the stones. So. Just got to make sure I'm looking at the right bits. To my eyes, that that bit there is quite is quite bright.
So the next step will be adding a little bit of shellac. Bless his mum. So basically I'm just disguising it a little. Now, for me, having got this far in the process, I'm suddenly thinking it's not dynamic enough. I want to change it a little bit more. I don't necessarily want it quite like the, the picture. So, what I'm going to do now is have a little bit of artistic license and I'm going to get this rock to show up a bit more. I want it to get a bit more atmospheric. So, I think I'm going to go in with colour and it'll it'll uh, match in with the tone. Wales when it is really dramatic so I'm going to turn this off. Look at that, that was a nice nasty thing to happen, didn't want that to happen. A little blob. But never mind, we shall sort him out. Take that little blob off and have a rock in the sky. So let's put a bit more of this on. Disguise it a little. Just rub that in a bit. Use him once again. Liking that, very atmospheric, very atmospheric. So I need to put put a few little grasses in here again now, just to uh, to complete it. Get my pointy tool.
So I've just been looking at this from a distance and I see now that I need another rock in the front here. And I think it's done. Cheap and cheerful tea light. A little bit of soap. 